Welcome to Vizzle. Today, we're talking about progress reporting with confidence. Progress reporting is an essential part of the educational process. And today, we're going to help you build confidence in capturing student information to make sure that you're moving them forward on their student learning journey. We're going to break this down into three parts. Number one, how to search, save, and assign things, creating a tracking tag, whether it's for a particular topic, series of standards, or a goal and objective that you're looking to support. Number two, how and where do students or teachers log in to make sure that the data points are being collected towards that particular set? And number three, running those quick reports, whether it's for a progress report or interim progress report or an uh, IEP or ARD meeting, et cetera, we want to make sure that you have all of the data that you need. Let's get started. I want to point out that I'm on the lessons tab at the top of the screen. I always like to start with the unit view because it gives me an overview of the curriculum for each grade level and subject area. This way I can search, save, and assign things easily. I've already created student groups for my level one, two, and three levels of support, making sure that I'm saving things for that student's instructional level, independent level when they're playing. So for third grade math, we've been working on geometry. I'm gonna scroll down and click on the details button that gives me an overview of the unit. When assigning any of the topics, it will open up and ask you for your level of instruction. So I'm gonna start by planning for my level one students. Notice a series of activities are gonna populate from our pre-assessment to check for prior knowledge, vocabulary, instructional text, and some generalization activities, always ending with that post-assessment to check for student learning. Click on the assign button at the top of the screen. Choose to check or uncheck any activities that you'd like to include. I've already organized my students into learning groups. So this is my level one math group. You'll see that those students are already selected. Choose your start and end date. Choose your whether you want the students to play one or more times and simply click the assign button. It will automatically create a topic tracking tab. So I'm in math, third grade, unit six, topic one, level one, all set and ready to go. It's automatically created so I can see and track and report on this information easily. But I want to point out that you can create custom goals as well. Whether you're providing intervention or an IEP goal, you simply click on the box to add any additional reporting categories that you want to capture. So maybe I have an IEP goal for 2D and 3D shapes. Simply type it in, hit the enter key, and click on save and close. This is going to create those tracking tags for me. So if I click on the drop down and go down to one of my students that are marked in that level one group, what I should see are those folders created for easy tracking and reporting. So here is my topic folder and here is my IEP goal. Well, why would I have two groups? Well, sometimes with an IEP goal, you might wanna open it up and modify how it's being reported. So this is the alert in terms of notifying me when the student has hit mastery. So if a particular goal says that the student is gonna do it five times with 75%, simply type it in and click okay. All this is, is an alert. It lets you know when these activities have been done in this particular set of criteria. So just again, you can edit any card. It also allows you to add additional activities to this particular set. So if the student needs to do something more than once or outside of this particular topic, you can always go back and add it to this particular tracking card. What does that look like? Well, I can always click on lessons at the top of the screen. And then maybe I'm gonna head down to Visual Classic. Here, I'm going to type in the word shapes, making sure that I'm searching in math, and it's going to give me an additional set of resources that I can choose from. Remembering that I'm working with my level one students, I'm going to scroll down and find the activities that apply. So here we're working on 3D shapes, 2D shapes, identifying those geometric figures, making sure that I'm grabbing the right level of assistance, and clicking the assign button in the lower right-hand corner. This is that opportunity to generalize, thinking about the principles of universal design for learning. I'm working on action, expression, engagement. I'm doing things in more than one way. Whether it's an individual student or you're clicking on that leveled group, go ahead and click the assign button in the lower right-hand corner after you selected your start and end dates. This is letting me know that those activities have been assigned and gives me the opportunity to add that additional tag. Do 2D and 3D shapes. There it is. And I'm going to hit save and close. Again, it's pulling up things that I've already created to make that tagging easy. So when it's time for the students to play, whether it's lessons within that topic or those additional activities, everything is at my fingertips. We talked about making sure that you can collect data. That's our next step. 
You can run activities in two places. If I'm sitting with a student in the classroom and working one-on-one, -on -one, I can always click on the dropdown, select the student name, and it's going to open up their particular folder. This is where I can see those tracking cards that I've created. I can also go to their activities tab. This allows me to filter for the things that I've assigned. So if I scroll down and click on math, I can find things that are assigned to specific folders by clicking on additional filters. So maybe we're looking for those 2D shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the enter button and do a quick search. And then it's gonna narrow that field down for me to start working with that student. And what I love about this is when I'm sitting here with the student next to me, I'm able to observe, watch student performance and get an idea about how the student's working independently. As we go through, I can open up any lesson or activity. This is the post assessment. So I'm checking through and making sure I'm grabbing that right lesson that I'd like to run, clicking play at the top of the screen. And I'm running a lesson for Tommy from his folder and it's tracking it to that card. Simply turn the pages and walk through and answer the questions. The student is going to participate in a way where it is most independent for him. Tommy's profile settings have him working at a level one, but only three choices. Lots of accommodations can be made to make sure the students are working independently. What are some of the attributes of a three-dimensional solid the student can read independently? Answering those questions across the board. I'm going to go ahead and exit out. And I just want to point out that the system is collecting this information and graphing and charting it along the way. The student can also log in with their own username and password. So going back to our login, whether it's via Clever or with the student's username and password, I'm clicking that sign in button to navigate and log that student in. So Tommy is all logged into his account. You can see each of the subjects and the activities that have been assigned, and he sees the lessons and materials that have been put into his folder by the teacher. Student can log in and click any of these lessons and materials and work on them in, in that particular sequence, capturing all of that data along the way. So let's just click on a lesson activity to see what that looks like. So as the student goes through, sort the cards if the descriptions are of two-dimensional or three-dimensional solids. It's giving them a prompt. Because students level one, it's giving the questions in text and they're gonna drag and drop and answer those questions. Again, Tommy's sitting next to me. Giving them a little reinforcement along the way, all the things that can be customized under student settings. Clicking the activity button, it's going to take him back. He can see that he's played this particular lesson and he can continue working through the activities in his folder. If I click back on my teacher view, close out, click on his tracking card, it's going to refresh and automatically give me any data that's been completed. It's instantaneous. And this is what I want. I want the data to be right at my fingertips for me to work on that progress monitoring and reporting. I also want to point out at the top of the screen, we have the detailed report button. So our next phase is really understanding what student reporting looks like, knowing that you can really pull so much information out to understand that student's learning journey. And there's lots of different ways we might need a report, whether it's sharing progress with the parent, whether you're looking at a particular intervention or instructional um, process that you're working through, if it's progress on a goal and objective, all of that can be sorted and filtered at your fingertips. You can choose any date range. So whether it's a week, a month, a year, um, you can really pull out any information that you'd like. You can choose your start and end time. You can choose a subject. So maybe I need this for the quarterly progress report. Click the submit button at the top of the screen. This allows me to pull a CSV or a PDF. I can click on it and it's going to open up that activity for me to be able to view just by double clicking and opening up that report. Again, everything at my fingertips as I need it. You can add notes and information. It gives me my percent correct. Lots of great information and details. You can also export it as a CSV file, and that way you can add external data, things outside of that interactive play with Invisal. As you're going through, note that you can also filter by the login. So if you have multiple teachers or staff, you can filter by the goal and objective or additional tag, whether it's by topic or goal and objective. The important piece is that we're pulling information and monitoring it across the board. Below, 
We also get questions about how do I know what the student got wrong? How do I provide support? How do I provide intervention? How do I know what to do next? And I want to point out that at the top of the screen, you can always click on the blue link and you're going to have a little pop-up that's going to show you what the student was working on. So this student was working on algebra. If I click on this particular card where the X is, you can actually see any errors that they made. So you can come back and reflect and provide support or intervention. You can look for trends. So you can drill down from subject to a specific thread in terms of a topic, all the way down to the error analysis per card. It's all there to help you understand that student's learning journey. We're excited for you to come in and play. Use those filters to narrow down the information and get the story that you need to share progress across the board. You should feel more confident in the process. Search, save, and assign, create those tags, and make sure that you have what you need as that student progresses in their learning. We're excited to have you on board and wish you happy visiting.